up until now I've just been running all my hydroponics pumps and air compressors and everything 100% of the time, all the time, no timers, nothing like that. Um, I realised that we can probably make efficiencies there because we don't need the pumps to run all the time and in fact with NFT stuff it's probably preferable to uh, let the pump, let the tubes um, dry out a little once in a while to let some air get to the roots. So I'm um, looking for a cheap solution for cycle timers because um, the problem I've got, I've got um, timers like this here, it's, it's got 10 programs on it spread over the course of a week so you can have it on and off 10 times a day but obviously if you want something that's on for one minute out of every 15 um, it's the wrong kind of thing and I've also got some of those 15 minute segment timers um, somewhere but again that's 15 minutes on as a minimum and 15 minutes off and you may want two minutes on so um, looking around eBay I found some of these um, cycle timers and they've got a potentiometer controls so you've got an, an on time and an off time and they, they sell these in a bunch of different flavours with um, on and off times from 0 to 6 seconds up to 0 to 60 hours um, I opted for the 0 to 30 minutes on each thing so we can be on for 1 minute and off for 30 or on for 2 minutes and off for 30 or you know something like that so I've got up to 30 minutes on each of these two timers um, the problem with these timers it turns out is they come with a 8-pin um, relay base on them but of course thankfully in the garage of infinite crap next to some propane I do have my selection of uh, large pin star relays and of course yes ah. come on there we go an 8-pin relay base so it's just got a bunch of screw terminals that go to each of the 8 pins so I'll need one of them so with the relay base I am actually able to get the thing working um, and with the controls set down at the absolute minimum it seems to turn on and off around about 20 seconds as the minimum kind of time it'll do anything for. Now given that they sell these in such a great variety um, and they hand write on the front the uh, multiplier, so times 5 minutes each one, um, I suspect they're just setting this inside with a jumper or setting a resistor value or something like that. So at some point I'll pull one of these apart and have a look and see what's going inside. Now the problem with these relay bases of course is that there's um, exposed metal connections, exposed screws on all the metal contacts. Um, there's no form of strain relief on the cable and if I were to just wire in an extension lead on the back of this um, sooner or later I'd trip over a cable, I'd pull the wires out, I'd have mains electricity kicking all over the place. Um, also there's lots of water in hydroponics and we don't want the, any of this stuff getting wet so um, I need to find something to enclose this to provide strain relief, to provide protection to all of this um, but still make it possible to set the time quickly and easily. I spent a good long while searching around in the garage of infinite crap trying to find some suitable kind of module projects box that um, would be the right size to fit this relay base and this timer and I could mount it flush with the front panel and perhaps mount a main socket by the side of it to uh, plug a plug in so it would be quite a nice self-contained unit. Um, I couldn't find anything as normal so after about an hour of searching I gave up and decided it was time for a coffee break and then I was hit with inspiration. I found a container that's got, um, well, ready-made with plug sockets built in, with power cable ready-made um, and cheap as chips. These four-way extensions are everywhere and they're dirt cheap. So I've um, used my Dremel and got rid of one of the connections. This one will be an always-on, then I'm going to have the relay timer base in here then these two sockets will be switched on and off by the relay. The base fits in there, the uh, lid of the socket fits back on beautifully, um, well nearly beautifully, there we are, fits back on perfectly and then the uh, relay will sit atop there um, which then sets the time for those two sockets and that strikes me as quite safe. We've got proper strain relief there and um, there's no exposed contacts I think I've got this wired right, I hope I've got this wired right, we'll find out soon. You may notice there's no soldering going on inside here, I'm a good boy because um, we're dealing with high energy systems that might overheat, we've um, just used nuts and bolts and crimps and uh, threaded holes and things like that so we're um, hopefully 
should be good. That should be always on. Those two should be switched and uh, that's our timer module in there. And um, well, we'll find out now whether um, this is either going to be my last video ever for YouTube or I'm going to live. We have a red light. That's a good sign. Yeah, so far so good. In it. Come on, show me what you're made of. There we go, and the lamp's on. And we'll be on for about 20 seconds or so. And then, come on. It's so boring. Hey, success! I'd say that works. So this all seems to be working very, very well. But I feel quite happy that, um, you know, that's reasonably safe. Um, so having taken one of these cycle timers to pieces, um, I don't feel so comfortable about the hacked extension lead I put together anymore. Um, these have no kind of internal protection whatsoever. They're a piece of cheap rubbish. I'm not going to show you the circuit board inside, but take my word for it. They're um, every bit the six quid £6.50 I paid for them um, and they had no protection whatsoever um, so I thought I'd better put them in some kind of more secure safer enclosure properly fused so I bought myself this enclosure um, it didn't come with any of the internals I've just spent the morning in the shed putting this together so I've made my own DIN rail out of FR4 printed circuit board material which is of course flame retardant and um, sufficiently mechanically stable for well anything you want and um, we've got three set, four separate sets of strain relief and terminal blocks there which will go and feed the three different extension blocks and of course the fourth one is for the power coming in. Um, I also made this front panel for it which has three individual fuse holders for each of the three channels. So um, I'll just throw that together now and give you a quick look of what this is going to look like even though I'm doing it all one handed. Obviously I've still got to actually put some wires in here, but I thought I'd show you the box before it looked like someone else built it all. There we go, so that's what it's going to look like. Uh, that will give me uh, three different timers for my um, two different NFT rails and for the flood and drain beds. Right. I've got all the wiring in folks, all my terminal blocks, all the cable strain relief, white one is mains coming in. We've got a 10 amp fuse there and then we break off to three separate 5 amp fuses, one for each channel because those things have only got 5 amp wiring inside and 5 amp relays and no circuit protection whatsoever. So um, 5 amp fuses is all the protection they're getting. And then these are going to go off to three sockets which I'll have to wire onto the end of them in a bit. Um, so I'm going to put all that together now, put the relays in and give it a test. Okay, it's about half past six, seven o'clock at night now and I've got my uh, timer box wired in now and then I've got three sockets, waterproof sockets on the ankle, or splash proof at least. Um, and yeah, that's a waterproof enclosure and it's time to give it a test and see what happens. Will it work, will it not? I really honestly haven't tested this yet at all. That's a good sign, three lights on. And in about 18 seconds, somewhere around about that, we should switch on our lamp. These timers will click over to the on position and hopefully the lamp's going to turn on normally about 18 seconds. There we go and on comes the lamp. Well that's at least one socket working. I'm going to test the other ones and um, get the pumps plugged in. I'm just going to record until it goes off for no good reason other than to make sure it does. And off and off. There we go. Excellent. Very happy with that. Right, I've got my pumps plugged in now. The two NFT rails run a cycle of five minutes on and seven minutes off. And the ebb and flow beds do 18 seconds on and 30 minutes off. Um, and it's all working. So tomorrow I'm going to plant my onions. Um, thanks for watching folks. Hope you enjoyed it.